I may not have a, you know, tripod or anything, but I can prop my phone up onto my radiator. And I can use that. This changes everything. Welcome to my April favorites video. So what I did for each of the things on this list is I gave it a score out of 10, and then I did some positives and some negatives about it. First thing, The Great Comet of 1812. Full title, Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. A new musical. This is an electric dance music musical about a 70, I think, 70 or 80 page part of War and Peace about Natasha's affair with Anatole, and oh my god. The original Broadway cast was, first off, Natasha was also played by Pippa Sue in like the off-Broadway cast, so that's super cool. Uh, Josh Groban, Lucas Steele, Brittain Ashford, Amber Gray, who is phenomenal, Grace McLean, Nick Chosky, uh, Nicholas Belton, and Gelsey Bell. This show, holy crap. First off, like, I gave it a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, the positives are, and then I just wrote the, a, the letter A, because uh, I just, that's, that's all I can really say about it. The cast is absolutely amazing. They're all really invested in these characters. They all actually, like, really give a shit. Josh Groban is there. The music is so good. It's not like anything I've ever heard before. And I love it so, so much. A lot of it is actually just chunks of War and Peace, but Dave Malloy is so amazing and magical that he just managed to like, make it good. That means a lot of it doesn't rhyme, which is also really cool and not something that happens a lot on Broadway, so I really like how innovative it is. So for the negatives, there's only really two negatives that I can think of. Um, one is that they do use the anti-Romani G-slur a lot. According to G the website Genius, it's to show that Anatole doesn't give a shit about anyone else, and then also Natasha's godmother uses it, like, to hurt Natasha's feelings and to, like, really destroy her. So I'm, as a non-Romani person, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, but as far as I'm aware, Dave Malloy was planning on changing it to um, the word tipsy, uh, which also works. But I don't know, which brings us to our second thing. It's closed. I really wanted to see it, but I didn't get into it until after it closed. Uh, and also, the reason why it closed, I understand why it closed, so I'm not pissed about why it closed. I think every, I think Mandy Patinkin, um, quick expl explanation, um, so the role of Pierre was originated on Broadway by Josh Groban, a white man and then was taken over by Oak from Hamilton, a black man. Um, and Oak was replaced by Mandy Patinkin. And everybody was like, that's not cool. Cause as far as I'm aware, replaced is Broadway slang for like, you got fired, they hired someone new to take your place. And people were like, what the hell? This white man who could be doing a lot of other stuff is taking the place of this black man and it was like revolutionary because it was two dark-skinned black people playing love interests and yeah so that's why it closed so I do understand and I completely support like the outrage and stuff and I'm really glad that Mandy Patinkin did end up stepping down but that is also why the show closed so yeah <sighs> second thing is the comedian John Mulaney. Uh, you might know of him from his salt and pepper diner thing, which is the uh, seven plays of What's New Pussycat, one play of It's Not Unusual, 
and then 13 more plays of What's New Pussycat. He has two shows on Netflix, one of which is also on Spotify, and then there's a third show on Spotify. Uh, so I listen to his stuff while I'm in the shower, while I'm like, need something to fill the space, while I'm like cleaning or whatever. But I give him an 8 out of 10, a soft 8. I really like his speech patterns, and I've started emulating them a lot. Uh, he is funny. Um, and he's also mm, a lot less offensive than, you know, most of the cis-hat white guy comedians. But on the negative, he still says some yikes stuff. He seems to be kind of aware. I can't tell if he's doing it as satire or not. But I'm also not in any of the marginalized groups that he kind of rags on, so like, I can't really say anything other than like this is probably not good there's like a 97 percent chance it's not good and it's also friends with some yikes people like amy schumer so yeah thing number three the flash on cw uh so the flash is a it's on its fourth season it's a tv show about you know the flash like the dc superhero uh, it stars Grant Gustin, who was on Glee. Also, Andy Mantis is in like three episodes, and I love him. I give The Flash an 8 out of 10. The positives, I absolutely love the acting. Also, the cast seems really cool. The story is really good. Um, it's, it's something that it feels like it could get super convoluted super easy, but they're doing a really good job of making it like good and emotionally heart-wrenching. Oh my god, I, I think I've cried multiple times watching it already. I love all of the characters. They're all like well-rounded characters, which is always nice to see, especially because they have a good chunk of their main cast is people of color. The negatives are, like with most crime shows, it's kind of ableist. And with most crime TV shows, it's police apologistic which also bad. And the last thing that I don't like about the show is I can't find season four online anywhere. Thing four is the TV show Rise on NBC. Um, it is a TV show based on the book Drama High and it's about a high school teacher who's like, hey, let's do Spring Awakening in like this old steel mill town and everybody's like, how about you die um and he's like no we're gonna and then they proceed with like doing spring awakening and it's like glee but competently written that's my favorite thing to say about it and i give it a 9.5 out of 10. uh the positives i have written are almost everything the cast is amazing which is true every week they do like a live stream also it's like teenagers cast as teenagers for like the most part i think the oldest character, the oldest person playing a high schooler is Sean Grandillo, who's like 25. Um, but I love Sean Grandillo, so it's okay. He's a good. The story is really good. It covers, like Glee covered a lot of like social issues, but badly. And this covers a lot of social issues, but well, teen pregnancy, being gay, being trans, parents cheating, kids having to deal with the, their parents' shit. There's a lot of people of color, which is super cool. Um, Ali Cravalo's in it, and she's phenomenal. Um, she's such a good actress, oh my god. I also just really love Spring Awakening, so seeing it like get mainstream attra and, like attraction and attention is so cool to me. And then there's also the character of Michael, who is a trans guy played by a non-binary trans masculine person, Ellie De Salta Santos. I'm gonna link the Rise Instagram in the description, um, and also Ellie's just because they're my favorite. <laughs> they speak out on their personal Instagram about trans stuff and queer stuff, and also the whole cast seems to be absolutely phenomenal. And the way the show itself handles a trans character is really good. There are trans antagonistic people in it, but they're shown to be very clearly in the bad and in the wrong. Wow, sentences. Also, the book it's based on, Drama High, is 
really good from what I remember. I read it about a year ago and I really did enjoy reading it. For the negatives, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but there is like a fat girl um, and she's beautiful. She's played by the, the girl who plays Barb um, in Stranger Things. But the only time that the, so far, obviously it's only like part way through the first season. So like, hopefully this will change. But thus far, the only time that the chubby girl is shown to be like sexually attractive is as a beard for a gay guy, which is like really yikes. Also, like this is just I think my personal opinion 100%, but like it still falls into the trope of like the gay guy hates himself and is so far in the closet that he doesn't even notice it. And like I feel like that's been like gone over a hundred times and I understand that we need queer stories and there are people whose stories are like that that's not what I'm saying but this is a very big show and they could be showing so much more but hopefully that'll change also there's not enough Michael which is the trans guy character I just want more of him all the time I love him so much oh and another thing that they have in the positives is every week so like if you're if you've ever been in drama club you know that there's like the kids who get the big roles and then there's everybody else um so once a week online they release this thing called the understudies which is like ensemble understudies that kind of stuff um pretty much everyone who's not like the big two Wenla and Moritz all of them just being like yeah we exist and it's just like their backstage antics and they really sit online and it's like a couple minutes and I just really like that and I really like that they acknowledge that that's a thing that happens. <laughs> so number five is the Rodin exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum. But it's essentially bronze casts of Rodin's sculptures. I went when I was down in the city a couple weeks ago and I loved it. Uh, I gave it a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, the positives were there was this giant bust of Victor Hugo and I got to flip it off and I'm so excited because that is like my dream. That's been my dream for like three years. I have this huge grudge against Victor Hugo. And two, I actually didn't know this but I really liked Rodin's work. Um, what he does is he very much understands that life isn't perfect. Like statues should reflect that um, and that really comes across in his work. And that was, that was a really cool thing to see and I really liked that. Not really related to his work itself, but the exhibit had really dim lighting, which was nice because I had a really bad headache by that point in the day, because this was like shortly before we left. So yeah, good on that at, at Brooklyn Museum. The negative was there were some loud children. That was literally the only thing I didn't like about it. I wish there had been more of his stuff to see. That was really good. So thing number six. Radical Women Latin American Art, uh, which is a an exhibit that's currently at the Brooklyn Museum. Uh, I gave it a nine out of ten. Uh, the positives were it was just it like made me feel things. I can't like put into words why, but like the art there really did make me feel things and I really liked it. I didn't understand all of it. There was one that was like someone like brushing their teeth and then the like toothpaste would go all over the face and then come back down and then go up. I didn't understand it, but it was cool. Like, you aren't gonna understand every piece of art you see and that's fine. Like, way to go at like having like marginalized people's art. But yeah, it was just a really cool exhibit. The negatives were, it was supposed to be Latin American woman, but it was really vagina centric. And I, it wasn't necessarily feminist is the thing, but I always get very wary when feminist stuff is vagina centric because not all women have vaginas, not everyone with a vagina is a woman. There's also like a lot of like sounds and stuff and that's contributed to why I had a headache. The next thing isn't really like not gonna do like the rating and the positives and negatives, it's just some recommendations. These are things that I've been like listening to in the background while I've been working. The YouTube channel The Proper People, which is an urban exploration channel. Um, 
and I like it because they don't make it creepy. They don't have like jump scares and stuff. Um, so I really am a fan of their stuff. I've been listen watching like Clean With Me, Study With Me, and Plan With Me videos in the background while I work. Just because it's like nice. Seeing other people being productive helps me be productive. Um, and then finally, my last favorite is sleep. I went off my meds recently, accidentally, um, and it takes me a while to get over the chronic fatigue that comes with going off of my meds. So like 10 out of 10 for sleep, I've been napping every single goddamn day. So that was my April favorites, and I really hope you enjoyed. Um, for creators and such, I am gonna link down below. Um, thank you for watching.